use partial fractions to find the following indefinite integrals. This is going to be the case where we have distinct linear factors. So let's take a look. We can get indefinite integral of dx over x squared minus 4. x squared minus 4 factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. So what we're going to do here is, for each factor, we're going to give it its own piece of the denominator with a constant above it. So this is distinct linear factors, meaning no powers of anything that's showing up in the bottom. So here we only have two factors, so I only need two constants, a and b. We clear the denominator, so it's going to leave me with 1 equal to a, x minus 2, b, x plus 2. For the distinct linear factor case, the way I can solve for a and b easily is just to pick off the roots or just pick off the numbers that are going to make these terms go to 0. So for instance, I'm going to use 2 and minus 2. When I put a 2 in here, I'm going to have 1 equals 0 plus 4 times b. So b is equal to 1 fourth. And when I use minus 2, I'm going to put in, and we're going to wind up with 1 equal to minus 4a plus 0. a equals minus a fourth. So now I can replace what's in the integrand with our new expansion. So that's going to give me indefinite integral of minus a quarter, 1 over x plus 2, plus 1 quarter, 1 over x minus 2 dx. So these are both going to be any derivatives go up to natural log x plus 2 and natural log of x minus 2. And we keep the constants around. You could stop here, but you might as well go one more step and combine everything. So first, we could put the exponents up above our x plus 2 and x minus 2 because we are looking at natural log. The rule says exponents come to the x inside as powers. I have a minus sign here, so this is really a difference. So once I have these things raised to the 1 fourth power, I can put the x plus 2 in the bottom because it has the minus sign. Absolute values on all these because we're using general x. So my answer is going to be natural log of quantity x minus 2 over x plus 2 raised to the 1 fourth plus a constant. Two things we can check here. One thing we should have checked when I get my a equal to 1 fourth and my b equal to 1 fourth, we should just put it back in and combine things to make sure we wind up getting our original x squared minus 4. So that's just straightforward algebra. You're just combining everything over a co common denominator and seeing what happens, and it'll work out. Our other check, since I'm taking an indefinite integral, when I take the derivative of this, this better give me back my integrand. So checking that, let's see what we have. So here, I have natural log absolute value of a mess. So the rule is, forget about the absolute value signs, put your mess in the bottom, and then multiply by the derivative of the mess up top. So the derivative of this thing in the bottom, we're going to bring down the exponent, subtract 1, so it's going to be a quarter minus 3 quarters, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, the inside is just going to need a quotient rule, so we're going to have derivative of the top times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom times the top. When I sort that out with the correct signs, okay, we're going to notice, let's see what happens. So from the top here, that's just going to collapse into a 4, so we're looking at 4 over x plus 2 squared. The quarter over here is going to combine with that to just give me a 1, and we notice here well, these two terms are the same, except this has a minus exponent. So if I want to push this in the bottom, I lose the minus sign, so that'll be 1 fourth plus 3 fourths, which just has an exponent of 1. When I hit this with the x plus 2 squared, it's going to take away the 1 in the bottom, and it'll lose the square and just have a 1. So I'm going to have x minus 2, x plus 2 in the bottom, and I wind up getting exactly what was promised in the integrand. Now let's look at a partial fraction integral with three distinct linear factors. So we'll take dx over x cubed minus x. This is going to factor into x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. So I'm going to put this by itself. We're going to take each factor and we're going to load each one up with a constant. I'm going to multiply through by x cubed minus x. It's going to clear out all the denominators. 
It's going to give me this equation here. So I want to target each of these terms by setting our x equal to one of the roots that I start out with. So it's going to be either a minus 1, a 0, or a 1. If I set x equal to minus 1, I lose the first two terms, which gives me 2c equal to 1, or c is a half. If I put a 0 into each of these, we're going to lose the first and third term, leaving me with a minus b in the middle, or b equal to minus 1. If I put a 1 into each of these, we're going to have a 2a, the last two get lost, and then that's going to be equal to 1, so I have a equal to a half. So we're looking at the antiderivative of a half, 1 over x minus 1, minus 1 over x, plus a half, 1 over x plus 1. So, we take a look at each of these. If you note, the derivative of each denominator is just going to be equal to 1. So we're looking at, if I let u be equal to the denominator, du over u. So the indefinite integral is going to be natural log absolute value of u. So for each of these terms, we're just taking natural log absolute value, whatever's in the denominator. So the half natural log absolute value x minus 1 minus natural log absolute value x plus a half natural log absolute value x plus 1 plus a constant. As with the last exercise, I can just combine everything if I'm careful. So note that these exponents can go on top of the x minus 1 and the x plus 1. That's going to be the same as taking a square root on the inside. And then because I have a sum, I can combine those to give me square root of x squared minus 1. With the minus natural log of x, well, I can lump that in with that term by just dividing. If I'm going to move a minus sign to the inside, we have to divide by the term that's behind the natural log. So we're going to wind up with natural log of absolute value square root of x squared minus 1 over x plus a constant. So we have two checks. First you should check that this recombines to give you 1 over x cubed minus x. Then you should take the derivative of this to make sure that we get our integrand back. So derivative of natural log absolute value of radical x squared minus 1 over x should be equal to 1 over x cubed minus x.